This interview with Mr. Eustace Rose is being recorded on Thursday, January the 7th, 1999, at 10 a.m. in his Coquitlam home. The interviewer is Dick Ramsey. Mr. Rose will be discussing, among other things, his association with the Columbia Stage Line. Born in 1902, Mr. Rose is a native of Haddon Hall, England, located about 40 miles northeast of London. The family immigrated to Calgary, Alberta in 1906 and remained there until 1936 when they moved to El Rose, Saskatchewan, where Mr. Rose practiced his trade as a fire machinery and automobile mechanic. After periodic business trips to the United States, Mr. Rose, his wife and family, moved to New Westminster, B.C. in 1946, where he continued to practice his trade, but this time with the Royal City Motors. While at the Royal City Motors, he developed an interest in the bus transportation business and was invited to become a partner in what became known as the Columbia Stage Lines. Presently, Mr. Rose is retired and living in Coquitlam with his daughter, Idri. Mr. Rose just informed me that uh, his daughter's name is pronounced Edry, not Idri, as I said before. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Rose, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to interview you. And I'd like to uh, ask a question pertaining to uh, your move to Saskatchewan in the first place, if we go back that far. Uh, why did you move from, Saskatch from Alberta to Saskatchewan? Well, because it was easier to find farm work out there back in those days, mm -hmm. or for, for a man in mm -hmm. my position it was mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. That's well, the only reason I went to Saskatchewan. Yeah. In, in what part of the province is Elrose located? Elrose is, uh, oh, approximately a hundred miles from the Alberta border, mm -hmm. and possibly nearly the same from the U.S. border the U.S. border to the south mm -hmm. would be about mm -hmm. about a hundred miles from Alloge. Mm -hmm. What sort of a town is it? It was a small town. It happened that uh, the year we moved in there, a man who had a, let's see, he had a garage and he lost his garage operator. Mm -hmm. And I, I had been through, and I was a friend in those days of the man that was working for him. Mm. And we visited back and forth, Andy and I. Mm. And they knew us there, so this chap phoned the owner of the garage in Al Rose, mm -hmm. phoned and asked if I would think of it, consider coming there. I was working other places, and I said there was no reason I, why I wouldn't. If he gave me a good enough offer, I would come. And he said, well, one thing to his advantage, and it would be to mine, was that there was much better crop that year at Alvo's than, than there was in the area I was working. Mm -hmm. And so I agreed I would go out there, and Edry and I moved out there. Edry Senior, of course, otherwise. Yes. But we yes, mo yes. we moved out there. Yes. And rented a small house in Elrose. Mm -hmm. And I worked there. Well, did did uh, in other words, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, it's clear in my throat. You uh, received your uh, machinery and automobile mechanic training uh, in Elrose in this particular shop and you were doing farming there at the same time were you was that do it were you farming there as no a, as no a, I didn't farm no you you were you were no, no. but from this chap mm -hmm. uh, to whom you referred uh, you uh, 
that is where you receive your, your training in the machinery and automobile mechanic work. Is that is that, is no. that correct? What's that? Three? No, no. I'm just this. Yes, I just I was just asking. Where did you? I wasn't just quite sure where you received your farm machinery and automobile training. Uh, I, uh, that that was you were referring to a chap who had a shop there. And is that where you received your training in that shop? Well, uh, no, I received oh. my training by working. That's why. Yes, did. yes. Year after, uh, yeah. from the time I was a kid on, yeah. I yeah. hung around the garage. And oh, worked, I see. Mm -hmm. Worked for the guy in the garage. Mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. As I got to know him. I see. I see. Finally, I was. Uh, and he gave you a job. Finally, I was considered a. Uh, Good mechanic. Oh, and, good. Uh, yeah, I worked for a while. Yes. There, and then went to. Uh, and when I went to Alrose, I took over the shop that belonged to. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. So you had your own shop there for a while. In a, in a while. In, I, in, I, yeah. I uh, I didn't collect my own money or anything, but I worked, and the bills went into mm -hmm. the office. Yeah. Of, yeah. Of the farm machinery yeah, and yeah. the garage man that I yeah. was working for. Yeah, very. That's very good. Well, that uh, that. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. No, that. Okay. I was pretty yeah. young yeah. then, anyway. Yes. Yeah. Well, you mentioned to me in a previous discussion that uh, you uh, traveled to the United States. Uh, well, that various, was, uh, Can that you tell was, me about that? That was late. Uh, oh. That, that was uh, because during the war, the U.S. Had a huge crop down in the wheat area on both sides of the Mississippi, Mississippi River and mm -hmm. all that through there, mm -hmm. right from North Dakota to South Dakota, on down through to Texas. Mm -hmm. And the 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 war was on. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we. I can't even think just what year that was. No, well, that's all right. But it's uh, in that in that yeah. period. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, the reason we went down there was that uh, I was working in this garage and I was getting a little tired of that. And two farmers, oh, the U.S. Uh, put up uh, an offer to farmers in Saskatchewan who had uh, combines for cutting wheat to go down into the States and give us free entry and everything and uh, told us what they needed, a truck. Uh, and a combine machine, mm -hmm. and at least two men with each. Uh, so two farmers got together, and they uh, they both had big trucks. Well, well, not huge trucks, but good-sized trucks. Mm -hmm. And they both could move their combine on and off their truck and haul it up and, or down there and back. You had to haul it back to cut your own crop for yeah. them. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they came to me. Mm -hmm. Would uh, would you consider going down as the mechanic and uh, the chief operator of the two trucks? Mm -hmm. And I, uh, they supplied me with a little uh, uh, GM uh -huh. small truck. What was it? What did they call them? Doesn't matter. Pickup. Yeah, a little pickup. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I drove a little pickup. Uh -huh. No, in the in the end, uh, the two farmers came down with us to see mm -hmm. where we were going and what we were doing. <laughs> and they drove the little pickup, yeah. so I drove one of the big trucks with a <laughs> with a machine on it mm -hmm. and led the way down there. Yeah. Yeah. All you had to do was have a map, and yeah. understand which way you were going. You're all right. <laughs> and the U.S. officials were good. Yeah. They, there were no objections if you had your, you had a card that the U.S. government gave you to make this trip, and uh, they lined out a sort of a, a sort of a route for you. Mm -hmm. But it was only a suggested route, you, because once you got down there, you didn't know whether you're going to 50 miles to one side of your main road or 50 miles to the other <laughs> to cut yeah. wheat. Yeah. Yeah. But we got down there mm -hmm. in June, mm -hmm. 
No, we got down there in late May. That's right. right. And the crop was just ripening right up. Much earlier than ours in yes. Saskatchewan. Or our area. Yes, yes. So... Mm -hmm. Did you... We, yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. So we drove, uh, drove down there. I drove one of the big trucks with a combine. And uh, one of the farmers drove his own. The other chap was in the little pickup truck that I was to use through the summer. We were down there for three months. Mm -hmm. Well, that must have been quite an experience for you. <laughs> Tell me, could you give me some rough idea of when that actually took place? With, uh, well, we, we left. That the, was during the war, did you say? Or you... We left. Let's see the, see the year, we will think. Well, just generally speaking, nothing. Well, I came out here in 46. That was 46, yeah, we mm -hmm. left. Yeah. We took the outfit, yeah. Yeah. or the outfits, yeah. down there in early May. And about the uh, 25th yeah. or 26th yeah. of May, yeah. we started to combine, yeah. or to cut the yeah. wheat. Well, the reason I asked that question is because I really think that for a 97-year-old man, you have a razor-sharp memory. That's all. Well, I, mean, you're, you're, you I, were, <laughs> I would debate that a little bit because <laughs> I have to stop and think. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I remember going yeah. in May, and I can remember yeah. various yeah. pieces of the states yeah. that we went through. We went past yeah. Yeah. that mountain where they covered the, or where they, uh, yeah. <clears throat> they uh, chomped out part of a mountain cliff and mm. have, they've got the five or six presidents or four or five presidents faces oh. on, up on the, that mountain. Oh yes. It's, yeah. a, it's in yeah. South yeah. Dakota. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You've probably read yeah. it. Oh, I've, yes, yes. I've yes. probably even seen a picture of it yeah. in a paper or on a calendar. Yes, of something. course, yes. Yeah, we went down through there. And, uh, oh, they, they were good, no matter yeah. where you went, you just reported yeah. your name and your, mm -hmm. where you were heading for, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they would give you, they'd give you advice on the best road mm -hmm. and how to get there easiest. Yes. Yeah. No, they were good. Well, we, uh, yeah. we started well, combine, yeah. I would say about the 25th of May. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that's very, very good. That, that's, no doubt about it, it was a very impressive experience for you. But what I'd be interested in now, uh, Mr. Rose, is to discover what uh, helped you to decide to move to the West Coast, and particularly uh, to New Westminster. Oh, the, well, New Westminster, because we had some, uh, well, my wife had some relatives out here. Oh, yeah. That was for yeah. that We mm -hmm. went to Westminster. Mm -hmm. But we came here because uh, the doctor told me to get out of that ah. high, high air country. Right, right. Uh, yeah, yes. I think poor doctor yeah. did a while ago, and I'm yeah. still living. But yeah. he, he gave me the right advice. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Was it difficult or was it relatively easy to find your kind of work in New Westminster? Oh, it was pretty easy. You know, mm -hmm. I had a few thousand in the bank uh, uh -huh. that I had earned. Mm -hmm. Those, those uh, two farmers that yeah. hired me to lead the out or to run the outfit when we got down there, they paid me well. Yes, yes. Because we ran oh hours and hours more than the average combine did. Yes. When we started, that we were good for the day most of the time. Yes, yes. And a lot of them didn't keep things up and in the first place that was what I was there for to yeah. see that things ran right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we uh, no there was no difficulty yeah. in transferring. Yeah. I yeah. sold the car I had and yeah. came out here. Yeah. How did you actually become involved with the Royal City Motors? Did you just go in and apply oh, for a job? Or? I was no I I came out here in October, I think. Mm -hmm. We were all through combine, and uh, we had combine the Saskatchewan crop around that road. Mm -hmm. What all we did with the two farmers, mm -hmm. the combines, mm -hmm. and uh, I was through. I was free then. Mm -hmm. And my wife and the two little kids were out here with her 
Lovely things out here. Mm -hmm. um, but I came out and we rented a house and mm -hmm. lived in it for a while. And mm -hmm. But was the Royal City Motors Company a large company or was it a small company? What was it, like? it was a small company in a way. Just Royal City Motors was the name of the yeah. company. Yeah. The owners were Terry Andrew. Um, who the where was the other guy? I forget, I forget him. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I, uh, Terry Andrew and I got along very well. Oh, good. But the other chap, he was a little inclined to come in with a little too much booze in him. So, oh, I so I, well, I better yeah. not remember his name. I can't Highly remember. spirited man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll forget, we'll forget him. Yeah. Well, where was the... Nice uh, chap. But, yeah. yeah. Where was the where was the uh, the company located in Westminster? The, the Royal City Motors. Yes. It's uh, one street to the uh, northwest of uh, Main Street. Columbia Street. I mean, off Columbia Street. Which you by Main Street? Do you mean Columbia Street? Well, Columbia yes, Street is, is the main good run. Yes. Yeah. There. You remember the old uh, Mac. Oh, uh, it's still there, a big, uh, the Sally Ann has had a big place in it for a long time. Oh, I see. Clothing and stuff, mm -hmm. if you remember that. Who, who was that? It was some big company. A hard trap? Hard well, you hard think it, company. Yes, a TJ Trap? Trap Motors? Well, uh, it wasn't Trap Motors. Trap Motors had the shell, but we were on the block. Royal City Motors, or we were neighbors. Of you were neighbors to trap. Yeah, I see. Sure. Well, that gives you the idea of it. Yes. Well, that's very good. <coughs> is, is the Royal City Motors still in business today? or have they? I don't think so. Don't think I don't so. know. I have been in town <coughs> yeah. so little since we moved out here. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. Well, what uh, what were you or your responsibilities at... Uh, well, uh, they were looking for a, a capable auto mechanic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I was one. I, I see. I, w I went down there and uh, met their foreman, mm -hmm. Leo Gagne. Mm -hmm. No, not Gagne, Leo somebody. I could dig that up too, but it's back in there, Leo Grand. Wasn't it Landerville, was it? Which? Landerville? No. Uh, no. No, I'm not gone yet. Doesn't matter. It's, oh no. Anyway, <laughs> it's uh, very good. Leo you was can... there for a month, and he and I talked and walked around the shop down there. They had to advertise for a yeah. capable yeah. mechanic. I see. They had uh, eight mechanics there, but uh, uh -huh. eight of them were uh, returnees from the. Uh, war? The war, or they were uh, learning about. Uh, they were just beginning the trade. Huh? They were getting into uh, the trade, yeah. Uh, they were see. beginners, yeah. and uh, yeah. some of them knew nothing. Oh. And uh, Leo was a nice chap, a good yeah. fellow. That's yeah, good. He, had, he, too, had come from the prairies. He right. came from Edmonton. Oh, yeah. And had uh, been in the uh, garage yeah. there yeah. for some years. Yeah. But he came out with yeah. uh, Royal City Motors, the two owners, Mm -hmm. Pushed Leo up a little bit here and there, and uh, he was the uh, foreman. Mm -hmm. You know, he looked after. And you all worked for the him, Ben. He, he was your 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 supervisor. Is that true? Yeah, that's you worked right. with him. He was he was, he yeah. ran the yeah. or he yeah. looked after yeah. oh. the jobs yes. and yeah. such. Like. But uh, a lot of these men didn't know know too much. No, you know, they no. Were yeah. Hurriedly trained. Yes. And, uh, yes. In wartime. Mm -hmm. Well, you well, had to, uh, training from the time you were a boy, actually, didn't you? I wish. You had training from the time you were a boy. Oh, pretty well. Yes. Pretty well, yeah. Yes. So I you had, had a lot of training behind you. I had worked on mechanics mm -hmm. for years. Well, I'm interested, too, of course, in how you've uh, got involved in the, in, or to the transportation business. And you mentioned to me in a previous discussion uh, that there was a, a taxi service uh, running between New Westminster and Port Moody at that time. Yeah. Uh, could you tell me more about that? Well, uh, only uh, only the I just knew the owner was Terry Andrew. 
Oh yes, he was one of the one of the operators of Royal City Motors. Mm -hmm. And Terry, ran, as a kind of a sideline, he ran this mm -hmm. little taxi service. It wasn't buses; it was just uh, this taxi, and he mm -hmm. had lengthened out this old car and made, I would say, maybe four trips a day. Mm -hmm. Through through Port Moody and two of them in during the day, I think mm -hmm. would go on out to Ioko. Oh, I see. One in the morning and one in the evening, mm -hmm. I believe, to Ioko, mm -hmm. and uh, two more ran uh, as far as Port Moody and back during the day. Mm -hmm. That was more for uh, store customers and things that wanted to come to Westminster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Terry Andrew did that, and uh, so he was built, a, uh, built me, up right? to a couple of small bus type. But they weren't really buses; they were they were classes mm -hmm. buses, all right. But they were uh, a, a bus or a stage yes. kind of built onto yes. a, yes. a truck frame. I see. Yeah. So Terry Andrews then was an employee. Uh, for the trap, uh, uh, not trap, but excuse me, to the Royal City Motors, and he, on his, on, as an aside line, as a sideline, yes. he started this taxi service. Yes, yeah. I see. You mentioned to me previously that, uh, uh, or made reference to, I might say, the stretch taxi. You, you said something about stretching a, a cab just a few moments ago. Was yeah. that, the, was that, the, the yeah. just yeah, like that, like that a stretch was... ferry? This was a stretch taxi. Yeah, that's, that, that was uh, Terry's uh, idea. Oh, had yeah. this, had this. It was an old, old big car. Mm -hmm. and what year? Stretch, yeah. stretch that they yeah. cut it in two. <laughs> put, yeah, put, made, made it bigger. What year would this be? Around what year? Just uh, shortly well, after uh, 46? Or I three? don't know the year he did that, but mm -hmm. I believe it was about uh, a year before I came out. Uh, oh. And we came out here in... Uh, so that would be about 1945 when that taxi service was in existence. Yeah, 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 that was likely just yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. We came out in 46 and mm -hmm. uh, they had run this little taxi. Mm -hmm. So you be eventually became involved in that service, didn't you? Well, uh, not the little one. Not no, the little one, but then, when it became a, yeah. a bus-like service. Then, yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. Yes, because in the end they took me off the working in the garage on yeah. the cars or whatever people came in. Yeah. They put me permanently on the bus line because Terry, <coughs> Terry had a, Terry built up the bus line from his uh, little taxi, mm -hmm. his seated bus line. Mm -hmm. He built it up and they had, I think, five, five buses. Five buses. They, and they weren't like the buses today, you know, no, they were only no. 22 or 20, 28 mm -hmm. passengers or something like that. But they were, mm -hmm. one of them was built in New Westminster, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I don't know by whom. No, no. Well, just to get this straight in my mind, if I just review it, you were uh, employed by Royal City Motors, yeah. and uh, Terry developed this service, and uh, got gradually added a, a bus to it, uh, and then you say they put you full time uh, working with the buses mechanically. Now, when you say they, you mean the Royal City Motors. In other words, the buses were serviced by Royal City Motors, well, uh, and you were responsible for servicing them. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that was uh, it. Uh, really, the, really. By then, Terry had sold his little bus line to Tommy Sproul. Oh yes. And Tommy was running it. He had a man in his office across the street from Royal City Motors. He had a little yard there and kept his buses in it. And they ran out. I think maybe he had, he had, when I went there, he must have had about four, maybe five buses. I see. That he picked up around the, and they were all different, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, you were working for Terry then, and not for Royal City well, Motors. Well, I was. Well, after that, I was. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They took me off. Took me out of the garage work. Yeah. And so you worked for Terry, 
and he had his own office and that type of thing. Well, he had his own office across the street, but he, he was still involved in Oil City Motors. Oh, I too. see. Oh, I see. Yeah, well, you're both involved with Oil City Motors, but yeah. involved also with the bus yeah. line. That's right. He uh, mm -hmm. had this uh, mm -hmm. to look after. Mm -hmm. And then he uh, sold it to Tommy Sproul. Mm -hmm. I see. And Tommy ran it mm -hmm. and uh, drove one of the buses himself. Oh, yes. But uh, there was a couple of extra trips morning and evening, and Tommy drove them and was in his office most of the day. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. That wasn't too hard to mm -hmm. explain. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's see, what am I aiming at? Well, you were... You were saying that you, Tommy, was Tommy Sproul, was that his name? Yeah, Tommy Sproul. He bought the business from uh, Terry, from Terry yeah. and then uh, it was no longer associated with Royal City Motors. Oh, yeah, we associated it, yeah. and we did the repairs in, uh, in their shed. In their shed, yeah. Their yeah. Shop, yeah. But you, then you worked for, for Sproul. Well, I was working for, no, I was working for Terry. But, yeah. But uh, Terry was helping Sproul out. Oh, I, I see. Yeah. Finally, finally, he had to take the the uh, the, uh, the buses back because uh, Tommy couldn't make it go. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, so Terry took over again. Then. So Terry took over again yeah. and uh, asked me if I would come definitely for a full time on the bus line. I see. And, uh, and I did. Yeah, I preferred it to. To working for Royal City. Well, no, I was working in the same place. With yeah, the yeah, same, yeah. I same say, gang, people, that was a very good arrangement, I'd say. Yeah, but it was you, good. Yeah. Would uh, you have any idea what year that would be? Okay. Would you have any idea what year that would be when you went full well, time? That would in? be. Uh, let's see. I came out here in. Uh, would be forty-seven by the time you came. Yeah, no, it was, it was forty-six, and when uh, you by came out forty-seven. Then. By the fall of 47, this had all transpired. I, I was see. working for yeah. Terry on his bus line, all but right. uh, working in Royal City yeah. Motor uh, Shop. Yeah. And uh, I was uh, kind of assistant to their yeah. Yeah. their <coughs> top mechanic, mm -hmm. uh, Leo, that yeah. ran things yeah. in the, yeah. in the uh, garage. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I'm just you know, interested in knowing when you actually became involved full time with this. Uh, because it's quite a historical event, I think. You're becoming in, involved in your own company, and uh, yeah. etc. And you you became a partner with him, did you? Uh, well, uh, very small part partner. I did. I just uh, would earn so many shares yeah. as a. Uh, oh, uh, re really, it was. Uh, a gift. I think probably it was to keep me there. I see. Not that I was thinking. I liked uh, Terry and I yeah. liked the way of doing things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I stayed with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he paid me the, yeah. for the last while yeah. from the yeah. from his stage lines. Yeah. I was an employee yeah. of the stage lines rather than yeah. of the Royal City Motors for the last yeah. months or few years. What areas did it serve? New Westminster? Which, which areas did it serve? New Westminster to Coquitlam to Fort Moody? Well, from as Westminster to New Moody and uh, two trips a day. Well, f later on, four trips a day went through to Ioko uh -huh. and came back. We serviced all this area of uh, Coquitlam. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And how many buses did you have by that time? By that time, we had seven. Seven buses. Seven buses. And how many employees did you have? <laughs> uh, well, uh, Terry was running it. Uh -huh. He had uh, drivers, and he had me. That's all yeah, was yeah. He had yeah. the necessary amount of drivers, yeah, yeah, and once in a while, yeah. Terry would go out and drive one too. If he yeah, was yeah. hung up for a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the office was just across the street. Yeah, and, just across from the street. Yeah. And what would you charge people to go from U.S. Mr. to, to Coquitlam, for example? Oh, uh, 35 cents. 35 cents? Yeah, 35 cents when I started there. It went up a little. As Terry went along, he, he got a few better buses and he charged a little more. But he was very reasonable and uh, a real good fellow. Yes, yes. And now you, you mentioned that things went 
very well indeed until the uh, regional transit authority came into existence well, and that uh, well, made you uh, change your plans did it terry uh, terry sold sold well he asked me finally he said he didn't want to stay in the business any longer he was going out on something else oh in the end terry went up to uh, oh fort some place up in the north end and bought a hotel up there. A distinct change of business. Mm -hmm. And he sold the outfit to me and a partner. I was to pick a partner and I did. I picked uh, one of the drivers, a young, one of the youngest of them. Mm -hmm. he Mr. Rose was just mentioning that uh, he bought the company from uh, Terry Andrew, and uh, he chose a partner, Jerry Northcote, and Jerry Northcott, rather. And you, you mentioned it, 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 the name is Andrew or Andrews. Was it Andrew or Andrews? Andrew. Right. Andrew. Right. Andrew. Yeah. Right. Right. And so, what year, approximately, what year would this be when you when you did eventually? Become a full-time partner in the with uh, Jerry Northcott. Oh, that would be uh, 60, uh, 60 or sixty-one. Sixty or sixty-one. Yes, I 60 see. Sixty-one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Terry sold it to us quite reasonably, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we paid for it in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you you did a, made a pretty good living out of it, did you? Which? You made a pretty good living. Well, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, we both uh, yeah. we pay, didn't pay ourselves any great wages. No, we, yeah, we paid uh, ourselves just about what our drivers were getting in yeah. the year. Yeah, yeah, and I, I mentioned previously uh, made reference to the regional transit authority. Did everything seem to go very well for you until the regional uh, well, transit authority came to? Yes, it was it was going well. It was paying its way, and uh, we were making our payments to Terry. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't too big a strain. Yeah, yeah. It uh, was a lot of hours work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about the regional transit authority. What kind of problems did they? What kind of problems did the regional transit authority present you with? Well, they didn't. They didn't try. Uh, they didn't hurt us. They, oh, they uh, didn't. Oh. In the end, the transit authority. Well, uh, really, there was the uh, bus inspector. Oh yes. But he he was a good good chap, and uh, I kept care of the buses. And the, in the end, mm -hmm. he well, he, really, he went on a holiday, and mm -hmm. they they pushed another man into his job, mm -hmm. and the uh, chap that had been around. He came around about three times a year and mm -hmm. looked at my boxes mm -hmm. over and checked them and this and that. Mm -hmm. But uh, he told the other guy, he says, oh, all you have to go in there and just look and count the buses. He says, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. if Eustace is looking after them, he says, you don't need to. <laughs> and that was quite a compliment. But didn't the regional authority have some effect on your roots? Yes. Yeah, well, they took them away from us. They, yeah, took, they took your roots away from you. Yeah, they, because, yeah. they uh, told us we were through in the, uh, yeah. Yeah. In the uh, local business. Yes. They didn't take our uh, <coughs> bus outfit away from us no. or anything else, but they just took our just work took, away from took us. Took your work with them. Yeah. And, and why did they do that? Did they were going to serve as well, a demand it, for it was the NDP, and we were not. NDP. Oh, I see. Yeah, no, no one was the NDP yeah. that did that. Uh, I see. Uh, Barrett, Dave Barrett. Dave Barrett. You Dave probably Barrett. know of him. Yeah, I he was Dave, the yeah. first yeah. NDP yeah. Uh, chief of the yeah. of the, <laughs> of the government to, yeah. Yeah. to get elected. So they provided that they changed it into a, a public bus service. Uh, well, they, they turned it over to BC Hydro. I see. Right. Yeah, they right, were, right, they right, were yeah. fighting their way and right, the, the yeah. good, good, yes, yeah. good yeah. making or a good partnership yeah. with yeah. the BC Hydro. Yeah. No, they yeah. just turned it over. Yeah. On such and such, yeah. we just got a notice on such and such a date. Yeah. Yeah. Our uh, yeah. uh, 
bit of a shock to you. Uh, not badly. We were kind of expecting it in a way. We, we'd heard what they were working at. Yeah, yeah, I see. So we weren't too badly <clears throat> hurt. We, uh, we, well, really, we heard enough about it to yeah. know that we were going to lose it. And yeah. then, we, then we got a nice little note from the NDP government that our, uh, our franchise <laughs> was a, was good only till such and such a date. I see. I am. So and when I, did the franchise end? Any idea when it was? I'm not just sure. No. Uh, it ended. It ended uh, very suddenly. Yes. Yes. Anyway. Yes, yes. But in the meantime, we had decided mm -hmm. if we can't run these <laughs> local buses mm -hmm. on our routes. Mm -hmm. We went into debt and. Uh, Picked up two brand new uh, long haul diesel oh, buses. Oh, the yeah. long haul buses. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> they they were only about ninety thousand apiece. Okay. <laughs> That's all, ninety thousand dollars apiece. And you picked up two of them, did you? We, well, we got two of them, and we went into debt, and they. Yeah. But uh, we had good, a good name. Yeah. The bank accepted us. Good. We had no trouble. No, I'm no sure you trouble getting into town. And where did you go on these long hauls? On where long haul, well, we just, uh, they didn't take away our uh, bus licenses, you know. No. They just took away our area. They took away your area. Yeah. And they, uh, we were free niggers there. We had, well, we worked. In a way, there was uh, Bud, Bud had Bud uh, Cole had his outfit, and uh, a fellow had another outfit. Oh, he did let him go, and I, yeah. I don't call his name. He owned a bunch of uh, buses, uh, much like ours in a way, because yeah. they were not uh, long haul buses. Yeah. Well, where did you go on the long hauls? For example, did you go down the United States? Oh, okay. yes. We, we all went down to Reno and back. Did you? Every, every week. Ah. Or practically every week. week. Practically Very every good. week. We'd yeah. take a bus down there and yeah. it would come back. <clears throat> and this was known as the Columbia Stage Lines from New Westminster to Reno. Is that correct? Well, uh, we hauled from, and we, we had uh, bus trips. Well, if one was standing idle, we'd haul a bunch of old age pensioner, pensioners out somewhere, or maybe Chilliwack or something, oh. something they didn't see every day. Very good. The fact is, uh, my partner uh, was a, uh, drove one of these two new buses, yeah. and uh, he, he and our secretary, mm -hmm. Marge Fenton, mm -hmm. was, uh, were good at figuring out ways to take, well, uh, the senior citizens of the groups. Ah. Oh, it was not hard to load one up to take uh, maybe maybe down to uh, yeah. or Seattle or somebody yeah. just for a sightseeing trip. Good. And that was uh, what the buses were used yeah. at first. And yeah. as we yeah. got bigger and better, we took them farther. We went. We had trips to uh, oh, that French part of the U.S. South, uh, mm -hmm. not Mississippi, Louisiana. Louisiana. Now we oh, went boy. down there, we hauled the pensioners down there, uh, all each people. Good. Oh, they were, they were good. They liked yeah. us. Yeah. We had dealt well with them. They paid yeah. their prices. Yeah. They didn't. Yeah. I don't think they ever tried yeah. to do us down. Yeah. But uh, they used our yeah, buses and yeah, liked them, and yeah, liked our drivers. Yeah, yeah. But then, of course, Jerry was one of the drivers, my partner was yes, he one of the drivers. Yeah, yeah. He saw to it that yeah. those buses were clean, and yes. I saw to it yes. that they were in good shape. Yeah. There's the a good partnership then. <clears throat> that was a good partnership then. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. She lives up country now. He's mm -hmm. retired up. Uh, oh, yeah. Country and then he can he comes down here and he has a daughter out by oh, yeah. Langley there yeah. comes down with her and visits her and he, Jerry and his wife yeah. there at our door yeah. one one day. Yeah. Well, could you tell me 
how the company eventually became associated with the Maverick uh, coach oh, line. Yes, because uh, Bud had these big long haul outfits too. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of his were old GMs. They, they mm. had the diesel motors, but yeah. uh, they were old. They just didn't, mm. didn't look as good as they could. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if he had a very special trip, mm. he would uh, come and talk with us. And yeah. Our bus would go with our driver, but would take his trip. Ah. Uh, but he, were, he was keeping in with his his customers, you know. Right. But if they wanted a special new bus, uh, he knew where to come. We were we were uh -huh. we were friends. Uh, mm -hmm. So we uh, we worked together. Mm. And another thing, he uh, people found that uh, I shouldn't brag about it, but uh, the buses that went from our place, pretty nearly always came home without any trouble. Yes. And that was a big, a yes. big thing. Yes, yes. Well, uh, Bud had older buses. We just then had yes. those two new ones. And uh, between the odd trip from Bud and the trips we made and the short, yes. local, almost local trips we made for yes. the adventures mm -hmm. groups, mm -hmm. boy, we were busy. They Good. Were, they were running. <coughs> Well, and then Maverick came into the picture around this time. Well, right? yeah, Maverick then came into the picture, but uh, that was uh, that was a few years later. Oh, that was a few years. As, we, as we had gone along, we yeah. had uh, bought more buses. Oh, you did. Yeah, and we we ended up with uh, seven of those big fellows. Seven, seven. Eight, yeah, eight of those big fellows. Because uh, Chap over on the island there had bought one and yeah. was his own driver and runner and all the rest of it. He went into the garage yeah. for what yeah. he needed, yeah. thought he needed for repairs. Mm -hmm. He heard that our buses went to mm -hmm. Louisiana and back and came mm -hmm. back with the tires they left with mm -hmm. and came, <laughs> came back with the boat and said, well, they just... If you had seven you know, buses on the road... So, uh, uh, Yes. He was on the island and had a little line of his own, but he came to us and uh, sold us his bus mm -hmm. for a little less. We could buy a brand new one, but he, his were just as new as ours. Yes. And he came with it as the driver of that bus. Oh, I and see. It's just a bargain we made. Yeah. And he was a good chap. Yes. King was his name. Uh-huh. And between our buses and Bud... Bud, I believe, picked up two new ones somewhere, mm -hmm. or uh, practically new, mm -hmm. and boosted his. Mm -hmm. But he had 20 old GM buses with uh, well, GM diesels in them. They mm -hmm. were uh, long haul buses, but they were just too gone, too far gone to be long haul buses. You yeah. didn't put them yeah. too far. Yeah. Um, so. He th would throw the odd job our way, and for a little short job, we'd throw it his way. Yes. We worked well yes. with Bud, Bud. I like Bud. Yes. And in the end, well, we decided that I was getting up in age. I yes. was up, so I should have quit long uh, before. But I, <laughs> oh, let's see. I can't forget the year we sold, but we sold our outfit to Bud. How old, that's Bud of Maverick. Yeah, How, Bud, uh, Bud was Maverick. What was Bud's last name? Bud uh, Cole, C-O-L-E. Uh, C-O-L-E-S, I think. Coles, Bud Coles. Bud Coles, yes. Yeah. And you sold them the, the, to Maverick, uh, Bud Coles, and that would be, uh, uh, let me see, uh, would that be in the, in the mid-70s then? Oh, in the late 70s. In the late 70s. Late seventies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bud uh, agreed to buy our outfit uh -huh. and took our drivers with it, uh -huh. and he put them on our outfit, our mm -hmm. uh, newer buses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He put because we bought a mm -hmm. couple at a time, and mm -hmm. we had eight. Mm -hmm. Well, eight included this one single one mm -hmm. we bought with the driver, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. Bud put them on the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And asked if I would come with them. I said, well, I'm darn near old age, but I'll come for a while. How old would you be then? 
Let's see, I thought I was in the late 70s and I was born in 02. So oh, yeah. I, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, you're, you're, late 78, you're 79. 79. <laughs> uh, your late 70s. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. uh, very good. Well, that's how we <laughs> got. Well, we were friendly with Bud yes. all the time. Yes. We worked yes. together. Yes. If, if it was easier to use one of his on yes. a short yes. haul, yes. we put one of ours on a long yes. haul. Yes. Oh, that's what we did. It seemed to be uh, a lot of fellowship or friendly relations with other bus people. Yeah, that's and right. And that, you know, the many people, they see a bus on the on the road and then that's it. It's another bus. Yeah. They don't know what's behind it. And that's, and no, the, they don't know what's behind it. a really good uh, fraternity, you might say. <laughs> but Bud, Bud had some good drivers. Yeah. We had some good drivers. Yeah. We at one time were the only guy that ever sent the bus up into Alaska, yeah. and I came back a month later with the uh, tires on the left with. Nobody else ever did that. You sent a bus up to Alaska? Oh, yeah, did you say? several of them. Several of them, eh? Yeah. And they came back with well, tires and everything one, else? The first one we sent up there yeah, yeah. was uh, fairly new. Uh-huh. Hadn't got... Oh, I, I don't suppose it had 50,000 miles on it when uh -huh. it uh -huh. went to Alaska. Yeah. And uh, it went up there and it yeah. came back yeah. with the, yeah. it, uh, with the tires on the yeah. left, yeah. Yeah. Know, or left, yeah. Yeah. New West Mitchell way. Etc. Well, well, that's very good. That was kind of a record yeah. because yeah. those roads yeah. up there were horrible. Oh, for a while. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. Oh, but, but, uh, with some of his old buses, older buses, he ran into trouble up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's a bad place to have trouble with. Oh, there. I would, I would think so. <laughs> yeah. A lot of mosquitoes and bears. Yeah. 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 yeah you were all right so, if you went to California or yeah, the, yeah, down, yeah. down in the Midwest yeah, states yeah. or down in the middle states. Yeah. You could go there yeah. and come back with the tires you went away with. Because you were driving yeah. on pavement 99% yeah. of the time. Well, during the course of your career, so to speak, you send buses, well, it start off with the local route, U.S. Mr. Coquitlam, Fort Moody, Ioko, and so on. Then you found yourself going down to Reno and Alaska. You went down to California, too, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Lots of, quite a lot of yeah. California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot. In fact, is uh, Louisiana. Uh, Louisiana, we made several yeah. trips through there. You know, they have a, they have a, what do they call that? It's a French speaking section, and they have some big, well, a big to do of their own down uh, there. Uh -huh. right? We sent two buses down one spring, uh -huh. or one, yeah, it's spring down there before it was here, it was winter here still, but. Uh -huh. Two of our buses went down loaded, yeah. and uh, we were known for sending buses down that came back. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very but, uh, good. That was uh, that was kind of accidental too. Oh, <laughs> could you have imagined with all these experiences? You probably have some memories on certain things that happened to you. Some highlights, uh, interesting little anecdotes well, they say was, or stories. Too interested in that. I was just interested. Interested or mostly interested in yeah. how uh, how close to uh, perfection those yeah. buses were. In yeah, and I imagine they were in good close shape. to perfection. Yeah, yeah. Had to be, uh, yeah, absolutely. And of course, uh, the uh, bus inspector. Yeah. And for some reason or other, the uh, NDP didn't fire the bus inspector and put one of their own men in. But uh, I guess. He'd been there in, uh, for a long time, and boy, he was... He was good, was he? A nice chap. When he, well, I guess they recognized a good man when they saw one, yeah. you know? <laughs> well, that might have been, but I don't think Barrett had enough brains to know <laughs> whether a guy was I good see. or not. <laughs> I see. So, uh, I imagine you met all sorts of interesting customers, or the bus drivers did anyway. You were looking at the mechanics of the thing, but... Imagine there'd be customers who, no matter how well you treated them, they'd always complain. Is that, would that have that experience? Our drivers sure didn't, and our customers didn't. Mm. No, somebody might have seen one go by and yeah. 
said that the Pony Lane bus. Oh, I see. No, no. Well, no. That's we had a good yeah, name. Yeah, I would imagine you had a good name. No, I'm just saying that possibly there are people like that. No, ma no matter how well off they are, they're always complaining. Oh, yeah. yeah. And but would you have any interesting stories that you'd like to tell about this no, experience? No, not to. I mean, it's all very interesting, but any specific stories that you. Any. you had no major mishaps on the way, or you didn't carry any well, we had particular one, passengers we had of prominence? One mishap <laughs> on the road. It, uh, one of the big buses, the, new, uh, the newer ones, was da down in uh, driving alongside the river in southern Washington. And, uh, no, not southern Washington. Mm -hmm. Southern. Uh, what's, what's the state south of Washington? Oregon? Oregon? Oregon, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somewhere through Oregon. He mm -hmm. uh, driving alongside a river for miles and miles, uh -huh. and it was bitterly cold, uh -huh. and there was a fog rising off the river. The river was warmer than the air, and uh -huh. uh, this fog was rising, and it did something to our air intake. Uh, I don't air know conditioning? Just what, what it did. Mm -hmm. And the... Uh, uh, the motor started spitting a little fuel out. Uh, one, it wouldn't fire properly or uh, didn't. I the see. driver didn't know it, but uh, the car charged up from behind him and waved him down and told him he seemed to have a fire in his, uh -huh. in his smokestack. Uh -huh. A little flame. Uh -huh. uh -huh. One cylinder was uh, turning out uh, Oh, it, uh, turning out unburned fuel, that was what was uh, happening, uh, and the, uh, the next cylinder would turn out burned fuel and it would light something in the, uh, in the uh, exhaust pipe. Uh, they stick straight up, so uh, this guy coming up behind could see uh, it, yeah. so they stopped it and shut uh, it down. Uh -huh. I see. And, uh, we had another bus already in Reno at that time, his, uh, his crew was all... Well, it was all it was all set up for the sailing there for four days or five, and so we ran, get got him to run out got on the phone, got him to run out and pick up the crew or the uh, yeah. load from yeah. his other one, and uh, yeah. I went down, a driver and I went down there to see what was happened, and uh -huh. uh, yeah, it was the. It was in, or it was still in Oregon. It hadn't got out of the southeastern mm -hmm. side of Oregon on its way to Reno. Mm -hmm. And still alongside the river, and the, dri the driver, well, we had phoned uh, one of our, the uh, unloaded bus that was in Reno, came back and took the load in. Mm -hmm. And the driver stayed at a motel. Oh. While uh, another fellow and I, a driver and I, went down. To look at the bus, well, uh, the driver, and it was coming Christmas, yes, I think, because the driver said he didn't like to go down there. Mm -hmm. the we, we maybe wouldn't be back for Christmas if mm -hmm. he had two kids at home. And I yeah. said, oh, heck, well, it'll start. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, but uh, how do you know it'll start? And I said, oh, but we'll just go down and start it. <laughs> and he said, you don't even know what it's up for. And I said, oh, well, yeah, I know the driver shut it down because it was catching fires, uh, some unloaded yeah. fuel went, or unburned fuel went up through the stack. Yeah. And they said, yeah, but there's some electrical thing going wrong. And I said, yeah, I understand that, but then I've got a bunch of wiring and such, we'll fix that. Mm -hmm. And we went down there. We uh, dropped in at the motel where the driver was mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Talked with him for a while. He told us that he didn't know why it was, but uh, Definitely when the fellow with his car got ahead of him and stopped him, there was belches of flame would come up out of the stack. And I said, yeah, I don't understand how that. It was a misfiring on one shoulder rather than lighting a, a, the uh, flames or the exhaust from the uh, ones that were burning of their fuel. Mm -hmm. Just light, lighted some fuel in the, mm -hmm. in the stack. Mm -hmm. Well, at least I can believe that, but uh, in the end, they couldn't start it. They found that uh, somewhere or other an electric wire had burned out. 
Uh-huh. It had nothing to do with the uh-huh. fact that the fire was what burned it out. Yeah. But uh, anyway, the son of Champ, when I went down there, he was a driver and he was a kind of a good mechanic too. And I was the top man and he had died. This fellow John said, well, he said, well, we'll be away for Christmas. And I said, oh no, we'll go down there. Go down there in the afternoon and we we'll stay overnight and we we'll drive it back next day. And he, he said, "You're a cheerful sinner, but you don't know that this will happen." And I said, "I think it will. I figure it will." And he said that he went in the office. And he said, "I'll go down with you, sir." He said, "He says it'll start." Yeah. And uh, one of the guys in the office said. Uh, Oh, well, might have been another driver standing around in the office. I asked him, he said, well, who do you believe? And the guy that said it may start or the guy that says it will? And he said, well, I, I, I'm going down with him. I've got to say, he, yeah. he's right. Yeah. And so we took, we took long wires down yeah. and hooked our bus. Yeah. The bus we went down and got hooked it going. Hooked eh? it, uh, hooked it, uh, yeah. Hooked it's, uh, yes. wiring all the wall. Right. Bus and the wife he went next morning. Good. It was kind of chilly, but we went down a little, little, oh, some hay, hay or grass or something. But we picked up, I guess it was part of a bale of hay we burned a little in there <laughs> around the motor and mm-hmm. very carefully. Mm-hmm. And in the meantime, I repaired this electrical mm-hmm. thing that had burned off. And we put our uh, bus alongside it, oh, about 20 feet away, and a lot of wires over to it and turned it over. About two minutes it was running. <laughs> <laughs> lot, well, a lot, a lot of yeah, money. yeah. And you know, it's a wonderful thing that uh, as a partner in the business, you also have these skills and the talent to handle this. Otherwise, it, it could have cost you a fortune yeah. to send somebody down there to do it. But anyway, <laughs> oh, yeah, some people are. Uh, had to have it fixed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. Yeah. We gave the driver, the driver was still uh, in bed when we got it started. <laughs> and so we, <laughs> went, we went back and uh, yeah. so it took the, yeah. took both buses back by yeah. where he was in a, yeah. uh, uh, there was a small place there that he got a room on bed and yeah. he slept overnight and John and I went down. I got up in the morning. Well, we never went to bed. We were, <laughs> it was pretty near morning. Yeah, when we yeah, got down there, yeah, yeah. 400 odd miles from home. Oh, yeah. And uh, I said to John, well, I think we're going to be home for Christmas now. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I never thought we'd make it. <laughs> and he drove it back and I drove the car back. Or no, I, I had to sleep on the way. John was out of sleep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, excuse hi, me, there's hi, somebody hi. at the door. It's the moment, please. Yep. Well, we're back. We're back on tape again, uh, Mr. Rose. And uh, I would like to ask you at this time, uh, would you have any advice uh, for any person who is uh, planning to go into business? Well, the only advice I could possibly give him was to get a man with you that knows that business. Mm-hmm. I didn't know bus driving or uh, getting along with a crew of a bus full of people mm-hmm. but uh, my partner did mm-hmm. jerry northcott mm-hmm. he knew that mm-hmm. and he was uh, fairly well versed in uh, what you had to do i i was uh, well versed and i was uh, a good guesser and i was lucky <laughs> that's the big thing about uh, Being a mechanic, you yeah. have to be lucky. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Uh, you're very more than luck, though. You've got to well, requires a lot of yeah. talent and expertise, and apparently yeah. you've proven that you, yes, you had that. Yeah. And that's a but great. Uh, really, I couldn't give a man much advice about going into business no. without knowing something about both ends of yeah. that business. Yeah, yeah. I knew. I knew that you had to keep a bus in good shape. Mm-hmm. If it was long haul, mm-hmm. if it was going a thousand or four thousand miles or sometimes six thousand before it got back, 
Mm. That bus had to be in good shape. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that was okay. I knew how to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had some good drivers. Mm -hmm. The fact is, uh, if you weren't a good driver, it was fairly easy to replace you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there were good drivers. Yes, yes, yes. So, so we yes. ended up, Jerry was a good driver, mm -hmm. my, my partner, he was a good driver. Yeah. And we had two or three top notchers. Mm -hmm. And then this fellow, we bought his bus and he came with it. Mm -hmm. He was a good driver, King. Mm -hmm. So I forget his first name, but mm -hmm. King was his name. Mm -hmm. And also he was a good man that, mm -hmm. uh, looking after his mm -hmm. bus. He kept it clean and you know, you know, he'd been doing it by himself. Mm -hmm. He didn't do any mechanical mm -hmm. work, but then uh, his bus was mm -hmm. hadn't put on enough miles to need much mechanical yes, work. Yes, yes. Well, but uh, if you got if you've got good men, yes, and you are a good man, mm -hmm. they will they mm -hmm. work for you. Good. Well, that's very uh, very good advice. I'd say. Yeah. I but think. Uh, to yeah. Go, to go into a yeah. business green, you got. Well, Mr. Rose, uh, you are now in your 97th year, born 1902, and this is 1999. I'd like to know to what do you attribute your present vitality and well-being? My which? Your your vitality and your well-being. Oh. Oh, I, I lived uh, simply and pretty well. That was the one thing I, uh, I don't know whether a man should say that he did smoke when he was young for a few years and then he quit. <laughs> uh, there was that about it. And I came, I came of good stock, I believe. Mm -hmm. Very, very good stock. Mm -hmm. The dad and mother. Old, old country English people, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were, as far as I know, they were honest and did their job. Dad was a top-notch carpenter. In fact, is, uh, he was considered one of the best in Alberta. Uh -huh. And mother, well, mother lived to 101 in five months. Did she? So she was oh, boy. good old English blood anyway. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, they, we came to Alberta to a friend of dad's who had gone to school with dad in England. Neighbors, the, the parents were neighbors still mm -hmm. when we came out in mm -hmm. 19, uh, 1906. Yeah, we came out in mm -hmm. 1906. Mm -hmm. well, I think we were Forty days on the boat, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a long time. Yes, forty days. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I've yeah. heard mother yeah. say something about it. Yeah. But we were, uh, let's see, we, we got on of somewhere in England. I, mm -hmm. I must have been three and a half mm -hmm. or three. Yeah, three, three and a half, mm -hmm. I guess, mm -hmm. in 1906. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I only had 15 days in 1902. Well, yeah. That's yeah. about right. Yeah. 1906, yeah. we, uh, the friend of Dad's, school chum of Dad, a few years older, mm -hmm. had uh, had a uh, farm south of, a, mm -hmm. south of Calgary, a few miles, three miles, I think, but mm -hmm. that's hearsay, mm -hmm. just from Dad. And Dad... And he ran a milk route into Calgary. Ah, yeah. And it was the 1906 mm -hmm. winter, mm -hmm. was our first winter in Canada. Mm -hmm. And it was the toughest winter out Alberta has ever known. Is that the right? White man Is college. that right? The Indians may have known the worst mm -hmm. weather, but. Yeah. It's and, amazing. Uh, for some reason or other, Englishmen that come out for it, from England are kind of banked against the cold. I don't know just why it is, but Dad drove that uh, milk rig with a pair of horses and a sleigh and 
a top one. I got a cover on it and a little stove inside it to keep the milk from freezing. Oh, jeez. He was hauling milk into the customers in Calgary from about uh, three miles out, I think it was, but yes. I, I was pretty young. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I came from good stock. You know? Very good. Yeah. Boy, that's important, isn't it? To have yeah, a that, good start before you start, <laughs> so to speak. Keeps you, <laughs> it only keeps you alive yeah. in good blood. Yeah. Well, I hope I'm uh, just as fit as you are when I'm 97, if indeed I ever yeah. reach 97. But I'm also impressed too with uh, the types of things you've been doing in your leisure time during retirement. For example, your daughter was telling you about all this digging you do in the garden and uh, you uh, tore a fence down around the old school and you put around your own uh, your own property here in Coquitlam. Oh, and uh, those are two uh, major operations, I'd say. This house was here. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the lot. Yeah, yeah. Double, it's a double lot. They all were sold double. Uh -huh. It's uh, six, it was 60 feet wide by what, 100 and something. Yeah. And then we, uh, here, uh -huh. they were considering building a fire hall. Oh, right, yeah. right there. Yeah. And they wanted a paved alley. Yeah, paved alley through there. I don't know just why. Yeah. The, the fire hall had something to do with it. Yeah. Only they, they didn't build it till 10 or 12 years later. Could you, uh, could but, you, uh, could you oh, the, the uh, outcome of the double lock, we sold 12, well, we didn't sell it, we gave to the municipality 12 feet from my lot and 12 feet oh. from the one below, all the way through, all yeah. the owners. Oh, yeah. Gave it to the municipality and they put a paved lane in. Uh -huh. Most of our lanes aren't paved or some of them no, aren't. No, no. And then, that was early, they I think that was the first local one they paved. Mm -hmm. No, Austin would have been first because they paved behind the... Uh, Austin was the main road out here mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. stores built on it. Mm -hmm. Built or paved, or they paved the mm -hmm. lane. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, we, we gave them a bit. But uh, my lot now is a... What? A hundred and, oh, it's uh, 60 wide and 120 yeah. feet long. That's and right. now, how old were you when you put the fence around that? When I took, when I bought this place? No, no, when you put the fence around the place. Oh, I was in, uh, I was in my awfully late 60s. I was uh, late wor 60s. working you, for Oh, you were still working, working. yes, time. yes, I see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. Oh, I was yeah. just the impression. Yeah, it, there yeah. was no yeah. fence. No, no. And as I say, yeah, when they... Yeah, yeah. But you were digging the garden just a, just a while ago, weren't you? Weren't you dig You were digging your garden just a while ago. It's like you... Oh, yes. I was... Oh, that's all right. I didn't have to stand up. I was... Uh, just putting the cane away. The cane fell over. <laughs> oh, uh, that's, that's good. Right. I was... Uh, I was gardening here in the evenings and Whatever time I had Sunday, sometimes I worked all Sunday because if you had a bus mm -hmm. or something, yeah. you knew what it needed and all the rest of it, you could get your stuff. Mm -hmm. But you did, you dug that the garden after you were retired too as well. You've been digging the garden just up just oh, recently. I've been digging the garden here for very close to 50 years. Yeah, but just recently you've been digging it too. When you were in your 90s, you were digging it. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I... Yeah, I had a son-in-law help me last year. That's the first help I had on it. Yeah. That was, the, the, you know, that amazed me. I, I don't know how that, that, that wire fence and the concrete base, that's a lot of work. But the digging, I... I, I, I mixed it. All, all the rock in that base came out of my garden. Yeah. yeah. Every, every well, bit of it, I broke some of it up to put it into the yeah. trench that I yeah. poured yeah. for cement in. Well, I think that you are a remarkable man, and I certainly appreciated this opportunity to interview you and to learn about your life. 
and uh, the work you've been doing, and particularly the success and the adventures in the uh, in the bus business. Yeah. Would there be anything else that you might want to add about your experiences in the bus business before we draw this to a close? Anything well, comes to mind that I might not have asked you and should have asked you? Yeah. I had a, a good ear. Uh-huh. And uh, as I say, I, uh, by reading and studying and yes. working, yes. And working was a big part of it. Yeah. I had a lot of stuff in my head uh, yes. about motors and uh, yes. mechanical. Yeah. yeah. And it all worked to the good. Yes. I suppose that uh, I, di I drifted into the mechanical business for some reason or other and just built it up as I yeah. went. Yes. And I don't know yeah. what caused it. Yeah. But I had my hands in motors when I was 12 years old, yeah, 14. Yeah, yeah. And that was old Fords, too. Yeah, 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 old yeah, Fords. I, yeah. I could, old Fords, yeah. I, I could pull those old Fords apart and put them together. Yeah, imagine so. <laughs> Blindfolded, probably. Yeah. Uh -huh. With my eyes that. Yeah, sure. It but, <laughs> uh, it's working around home. I got that from Dad. Dad yeah, could yeah, do yeah. any woodwork. Yeah, and yeah. No, not much metal work because yeah. there was no call for it in those days. Yeah, it didn't yeah. weld quite together and make no. a fence. Yeah. Hey, look at my two squirrels playing. Oh, oh they're just... They're oh, a couple of squirrels right up the tree, the tree outside. Yeah. That is a beautiful place, all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? This nice, bright, beautiful BC weather today. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, Mr. Rose, thank you ever so much again. Oh, you're welcome, entirely welcome. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Well, I'd rather like to talk over the whole I, time. I know you do. Yeah. I know you do. He's For 97 years, yeah. it's marvelous. Congratulations. And <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my all attention, you know, was yes. given to me. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Uh, but by, well, in a way, it was through a kid that used to ride the buses to school. Oh. So he's a lot younger. Uh, yeah, I would imagine so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I went over there when they were ripping out fences and tearing yeah. down school houses. <laughs> Ask how it to take some of that water home. <laughs> I mean, go and see, he said, go and see the foreman. So yeah. I went to the foreman. Yeah. He said, Hank, you're useless. The old, uh, <laughs> the old uh, bus yeah. mechanic. And I said, yeah, sir. Uh, I own a piece of land here, and I'd like to know how much of that fence I could have. Yeah. And he said, well, I'll phone the bosses. He was the foreman over there. Yeah. And uh, he said, I'll phone the bosses. I'll tell you tomorrow morning. So mm -hmm. he did that. Mm -hmm. He used to ride our buses to school. He told me I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. But he said, you, I rode your buses to school for years. <laughs> so, uh, well, good work always pays off, he, you know. He, he phoned me, or he, no, I went over the next day to see it. And, then, and he said, sure. He said, take it away any way you can. And yeah. Take it and file it in your yard. He said, we're stripping it here. Uh -huh. But he said, if you want the post, you'll have to pull them out. And I said, well, I got another little jack, a little chain, I'll, I'll pull them out. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> I did, did all he was giving you was permission. He wasn't giving you any sweat on his brow no, at all, was no. he? No. <laughs> I, well. uh, I've always met, uh, mostly met good people yeah, from home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think, uh, you know, I hope that some of the younger people who have the opportunity to listen to this tape in the museum someday will realize just... Uh, what pioneer life was like, and even though it was just 1946 when you came out here, and some of the people came out here long before that, I don't think that they've had the kinds of experiences you've had. So thank you ever so much again, Mr. Rose. Oh, you're sure welcome. <laughs>